This podcast contains explicit content, language, and sexual situations. It is intended for adults 18 years of age and older. These thoughts and opinions expressed are not those of any specific employer, group, or individual. Better with the rat race, we decided to sell everything and move to Cancun, Mexico. Now we do what we love. Work, party, and play in the middle of paradise. Now we want to share the fun that we get to have every day. Come to room 77. Let's play. Just watch me. Hi, Lauren. How are you? Welcome back to the show. This is a podcast I've been recording now. Yeah, for uh, almost three years. That's amazing. Has it been three years? Over three years. For over three years. Yeah. And you've been here for every single one of them. I can't believe it. Yeah. I feel like I black out every time. You do? <laughs> it's the effect of the drugs. How are you? How, how are you feeling right now? Right now at this moment? I am feeling... Mm-hmm. Um, I'm feeling satisfied. I'm a little anxious, but I don't know why. I don't know why either. There's nothing that you have to get me or do for me. Uh, I've already had a salad, so my belly's kind of full. Mm. Don't want you to feel anxious. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably because I don't know what we're going to watch on TV tonight. There's nothing to watch. Speaking of watching things, Mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite pastimes with you. We have this TV system that we get like 100 free porn channels. And I (laughs) accidentally put on a channel that's called Blacked, which is just (laughs) black guys fucking white girls. In the last podcast, well, no, that was on the Patreon stuff. I say, is it racist to say I'm into Asian women? We had said on the thing, two white people asking if something is racist. It's probably racist. racist. I still find it cringy that you say BBC, that big black cock can be part of a fetish. I don't think that a, a race or a color and fetish should be in the same uh, category. Yeah, I agree. So that's why I sort of have a thing with that. But anyway, I'm talking about porn, just straight up porn. It reminds me of what just happened last week. Tell me, Rich. Well, I mean, I was there, but... You were there for most of it. So this is about catfishing. Now, if, if, if people out there don't know what catfishing is, catfishing is when you go online and you pretend to be somebody you're not to sort of draw someone in to get things out of them. It may be just emotions. It may be photos. It may be... It, it doesn't matter what... It may be a conversation. It doesn't matter. But you're basically pretending to be somebody you're not to get something out of that person. They are, in a way, victims victimizing you by using you for their own enjoyment enjoyment or entertainment mm-hmm. and they're they're feeding you untruths and wasting your time yeah th- to get their own kicks. I don't even know why why people do it I mean I would I tried to get this particular catfish on the the podcast mm-hmm. but he she denied we as a whole I've only been catfished two times in in my life. Uh One was when we were catfished before catfishing was even a thing. (laughs) This was literally during the days of AOL. You and I were in a chat room (laughs) and talking to some chick, sending photos. And we're like, oh my God, this girl's so hot. Mm -hmm. And like, we went out to to find her, drove like two hours and then they weren't there. And then you get back and then it was like, oh, my husband died. And we're like, what? Yeah. And then it was like, what? Oh my God, are you okay? Yeah. At that point, it was just like, that was really weird. I mean, because this is before the dawn of the internet where a lot of trickery was happening. This is when evil shit was starting to get invented. Yeah. It was a long time ago. I mean, it wasn't really, you know, you didn't really know how to do the digital games yet. There weren't a lot of, there weren't hardly any lifestyle websites. And it was just. If you know what ASL is, uh, (laughs) then you you, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Like if you used ASL, question mark, that was during that time, right? Yeah. That time we were catfished, and then on the podcast once we told a story where I talked to a girl online. I got so caught up in this girl <laughs> that I wound up injecting my penis and almost causing myself a heart attack because I turned it into a C. I was rocking the C, uh-huh. as the Colorado kids would say. Got hats out of that story. Mm-hmm. They made us hats, and then this one, which just almost got me, not quite. Okay, so this is what happened. We get these emails. We get emails all the time. We get spam emails all the time. This particular one was like, hey, uh, I want to talk to you about being uh, in some videos. Ah, delete. (laughs) Don't even respond. Don't even respond. And then you get another one. Uh, Hello. Uh, Me again. I sent you an email. I want to talk to you about doing some adult videos. Uh, Get out of my inbox. Yeah. I'm done with you. Next. Next. Another week goes by. We get a message on Telegram. That thing comes up. And it says, hello, I had sent you messages before about doing some some online videos for pay. And I was like, 
I do remember those emails. I remember throwing them away. Well, this person joined Patreon to get the Telegram link so they could message you on Telegram. Right. So we have a Telegram thing that's connected to our Patreon app where all the Patreons go in and talk and talk about dirty stuff. So they joined Patreon so that they could get in touch with us on a sort of- On a different platform. On a different platform. Yeah. And looking back, I understand why you would do that right? Why you wouldn't use Twitter, why you wouldn't use Instagram or or something like that. But at time, I'm oblivious. I get the message. I'm like, pay for sex? Go on. (laughs) We already have OnlyFans, so it's not that far off. They explained to me, first of all, this is uh, is about you, Richard, not your wife. Right. So I'm like, Lauren, get out of the room. You're not needed. (laughs) They only want me. But this person goes on to say, I do adult films in South Korea. I found your name online. I know you were an actor and we're looking for some legit actors that would do nudity and some some sex scenes in porn. And I say, uh, <laughs> all right, I'll do it. And sh- so they said, can I call you? And I said, okay. So I take the phone call, right? You keep saying they, but it was a she. Anyway, she calls me up. Ring, ring. Hello. And uh, she says, hello, this is Sasa. And immediately I say, where are you from? And she says, I am from South Korea. Immediately I say, you don't sound South Korean. <laughs> you did it. I'm looking at you like, who the fuck are you to judge accents? Right. And like, then what? she gets she gets mad at me. She's like, what do you mean? I am from South Korea. And I was like, oh my God. First thing out of the gate, I insult this person. I'm a huge racist. Yeah. Right? Like, what the fuck? So I'm like, talk to me. What's going on, Saza? I want to know everything about your life. She's like, I found you online. I know you were an actor before. It would be really interesting for us as a company to have you come out here and do some sex scenes. And it's sort of like Cinemax porn. It's not real porn, but it's- Yeah, it's it's sort of movie-ish. It's sort of movie-ish. Here's the plot line for the script that we have you in mind for. We were wondering if you'd be interested. And I said, well, yeah, I'd be interested. And they said, how much? I said, I will take $100,000, please. So she says, okay, well, I'll bring it back to my bosses. So now the next night, you and I are like, oh my God, I may actually be a South Korean porn star. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. (laughs) She sends us like a link. To look at the videos they make. Uh, I have my friends look into it. I'm like, is this thing legit? It's in South Korea and I don't read Korean, but I'm not, I don't have the time to learn. Yeah. So she calls back. She says, can I talk to you again? I said, yes, you may, Saza. (laughs) And she says, what are your terms and conditions? I said, well, I will not fly economy. That is number one. Okay. (laughs) I don't want my hundred thousand dollars. And my wife comes with me. And my wife comes with me. She says, "Well, I'll see what I can do." Now I have some questions for you, Richard. She says, "Oh, uh huh, yeah, and it's she's, a good catfish." Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, what do you need? And she was like, one of the questions was, now listen, even though we cannot show penetration, I want to know if you will have sex with these young Korean girls. (laughs) I say, well, yes, I will. (laughs) Now I have a, I have a part on here where she's describing a scene and uh, so she describes a scene to me and she says, uh, this is the scene and I need to know that you're okay. You start recording because this starts getting ludicrous. Hold on. So now I'm going to play this for you. I'm trying to explain the scene right. to you because Sorry, I have I'm headphones just, on. Right. I'm just going to, I'm going to stop you up. Like, so I'm angry. I'm at a bar. I'm coming home. I get it. I can act that stuff. And then when I get home, but then go. So she's very, very descriptive about what I have to do. Then the sex scene happens. How do you shoot it? Like, do you shoot it in a, <laughs> go ahead. Well, let me just, uh, 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 just to, no, no, it's okay. I just want to, I want to be really clear. All right, so I come home from a bar. I'm angry. I'm, I'm a little drunk. I want to have sex. And then it gets to the point where the the gal, the girl is in the room that I'm going to have sex with. So you don't go over positions or anything like that. You don't say, I want you to start by her blowing you. I don't, and then you're going to switch to, to doggy style. You just set up the cameras and you say, all right, go, go fuck. And then you use that, you use that footage so we just have to to wing it. You don't throw out. So now I'm feeling okay. a little skeptical. Oh, okay. Three minutes, sex scenes. So how many cameras? Should, how many setups do you do 
do you have like three cameras going at the same time? So I start throwing some technical jargon at her, <laughs> right? Because I want to see how many setups do you do? How many? That's a that's an easy question that you should be able to answer with somebody as a production company. Well, with three to four setups per scene. I don't really get an answer, and I apologize because I have headphones on this. But there's oh. more where I, I recorded the actual conversation, and I think the entire time it is a language barrier thing, right? <laughs> Uh, so I just let it go. I just want my hundred thousand dollars <laughs> and uh, business class, first class actually. Right. I got downgraded to business class. We'll get to that later. I try to read. Then I make her suck me. Right. <laughs> I make her suck so me. So I just take her and I, I make I make that actress right. suck me. I basically I do. tell her what to Hold do. Hold on. So she goes on to say that you're going to have to do, well, you just come in, you just fuck them. You just tell, basically, you tell them what to do, mm -hmm. Richard. You're, you're the actor. You're They're the actor. Just... You're the lead. This is the scene. You're an angry man. <laughs> come in and you fuck people. And you just tell them. I'm like, okay, do they know that I'm going to be doing this? <laughs> do I meet them? Do I, I, I don't, I, okay. So I'm trying <laughs> to speak English. I think you said I did. I was like, no, no, everyone will speak English. Like I should have known at that point. Yeah. Yeah. We'll only get English speaking Asian. So for you. What, now, who are the actresses that I'm doing this to? Because that, that sort of comes into question now because it feels a little like a song. <laughs> <laughs> so I say this feels a little bit like a salt. <laughs> Uh, Any Hollywood set, make an actress do something like that. I will, I will talk to the girl that I'm going to fuck before I fuck her. Okay. Yeah, Richard, here's what's going to happen in this next scene. Uh, <laughs> the actress is going to come in and you're going to be naked and uh, she's going to do whatever she wants. Okay, we're just, we're just going to keep shooting. No matter what happens, we're going to keep shooting. She may use some tools on you. Just let it flow. Let's just see what happens, okay? <laughs> Remember, keep your mind open and you're angry. <laughs> and action. And action. <laughs> so she keeps telling me how much Asian women love Western men. They, they are going to love you. It doesn't matter. You can look the way you want to look. You, she say, even said to me, you don't even have to go to the gym anymore. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You just being a Western man can come to Korea and have sex with many women in one night. This is what she said to me. That's awesome. Uh, I, I, I like it. I, I love that I, Korean I, I women get it. love Western um, men. I just don't know if Korean women will love this Western man. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. The only thing, I'm into all of that. Look, I'll go on set and I'll fuck any Korean girl I see. That's not the problem. The problem is, is one of the things that takes place in a situation like this is performance anxiety. Have you dealt with that? That's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is none of this is making much sense. <laughs> that, that's sort of the problem at this point. So we have uh, some other issues that we need to talk about. So then she says the most absurd thing to me ever. She says, Richard, I have to ask you something very personal. So, okay. She said, you have very big cock. I should have known at this point <laughs> she was an insane person. <laughs> Most of the girls that you are going to be making love to are very petite Korean women with very tight pussies. Do you have a problem with that? And I like, I snapped my neck over to you like, what? If you, she just asked me. <laughs> you're repeating stuff because you had the headphones on. But yeah. you're like, you got to hear this one. So you so were I'm just like, saying it get out loud. I was just playing Captain Exposition to you. Yeah, you I'm were. like, So you're worried go, if it's going to be okay if I have sex with pussies that are too tight. That is your concern? <laughs> with this Western man who doesn't have to go to the gym anymore. <laughs> right. I, doesn't matter what you look like. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you say. Really doesn't matter. We're going to pay you a boatload of money for just these cute, young, Korean, tight, tight. Co Korean girls. <laughs> They're going to have sex with you. We're also going to pay for all your meals. <laughs> That's what she said. She your did. meals and, and a hotel, and it has a suite and a sitting area and a bedroom. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I get what a suite is. Uh, <laughs> let's get back to that pussy. <laughs> so... Now, as ludicrous as this sounds, right. Right, I hang up the phone from Saza. <laughs> Her name is Saza, but I like to call her Saza. Yeah. I hang up the phone from Saza, and I go to bed that night, and I think, oh my God, I'm going to be a Korean porn star. <laughs> like, it's still not dawning on me that this is 100% false. Like there's still a percentage, right? And this is the catfishing thing. When you get that sense 
Uh, something's not right. Chances are it is not right. And well, I- and you called it like two minutes into the entire thing starting on day one. You were like, yeah, this is not even. But once you start you entertaining start, it. You start you entertaining get- it. And that's what the catfishes do. Yes, they and this suck is, you in. And because we are hashtag learning podcast, hashtag swinger learning, hashtag courses for and free. university, yeah. This is how they draw you in. Yeah. This is how they get you. There's still that 10% or that. Twenty percent, maybe fifty percent. It was like, I think, I think I'm gonna be a Korean porn star, and my parents are gonna be super proud. Really, you've bounced back from this acting thing. Went down to uh, Cancun. Look at you go, sticking your penis in little Asians, little tiny pussies. Hey, look at you go. (laughs) See, that career's not over. No, you made the best of it, and they flew you. First class. <laughs> and your wife. And your wife. So yeah, so we're still going to bed that night. And we're like, um, I got to text so-and-so and tell them that you're going to be a porn star. I'm like, you're in complete denial. You're, you're just like, this is so stupid. I'm not going to Korea to be a fucking porn star. Hey, Google, how long does it take to fly to Korea? <laughs> capital of South Korea. <laughs> and you're like, this is, none of this is absolutely true. Hey, Google, what are the people like in South Korea? <laughs> so it sort of starts to, uh, to screw with your brain a little bit. <laughs> And uh, I, I'm not. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm like, I'm sitting up at night, and I'm like, if this is true, this is going to be so hot. I'm going to be the best porn star that they have ever had because I'm going to. I'm going to do it good. I'm going to be. Yeah, good. you're going to be like a really good. Like, yeah, I'm going to be really good, yeah. right? And I went. I watched some of the videos she sent yeah, me. I, I was thought this is with you. Yeah, I was like, these aren't lit bad. I can work with this lighting. I can act. I feel like I'm going to do a good job. You're going to make it grounded. Right. And then I'm going to fuck those tight pussies. Right. And uh, let's face it. They are of a smaller frame, so my penis will look larger. You're going to look huge. I'm going to look huge. I think there's a win-win for everybody, (laughs) right? So- now, here's the thing with catfishing. Like, you really get sucked in. Just like the reason that I stuck a giant needle into my cock, there was nothing real about this woman that was in Tulum waiting to have sex with me and my wife. There was nothing real about her. The photos that she sent me, the stories, I, I, I don't know. Nothing about the AOL chat that we had with the woman. Nothing about that conversation was real. She didn't have a husband that died. It's, it's all about these weird emotions that they pull. The one thing that triggered the reason I didn't get catfished this time completely. A, how could you? I mean, you look at it, you're like, you're a fucking There's moron. me. There's me going, There's me. um, hello. I'm like, honey, this has nothing to do with you, okay? They don't want you, okay? They don't want the hot model. They want the average fat guy, okay? So just let me do my thing. Daddy's trying to bring home the bacon, all right? Just sit, sit down. I'm a big star. I got this. I got this. <laughs> Motherfucker with Saza. Shh. Once you start asking them questions, they they tend to have emotional responses. For instance, if you ask them personal business, they they get very emotional. They have an emotional response that makes you feel like, don't go Mm. there. I don't want to ruin this. For instance, asking her about her life. Anytime I ask that, she seemed to get very closed off. And then you feel like, Oh, I'm losing it. I remember asking the Tulum girl some personal questions and it was like, it, it started, oh, it was about a breakup and I don't want to talk about it. They ah. bring emotion into it. Now, the thing that saved me was that feeling inside of <laughs> what the fuck am I doing, right? <laughs> Why am I wasting time? Why am I wasting my time? That's what you have to snap into. You have to snap into that moment that something's not right and you have to Ask those questions and you have to wrap that shit up. <laughs> wrap it up quickly. Done. Because the more you feed that little beast, the more it's going to come back around. And then you you sort of feel bad questioning them. That's the other thing you do because you're a normal person, right? right. You're a normal human being with normal emotions that are acting normally in a normal way. They are not, right? Right. So you start to feel bad for even calling this person out now because basically what you're saying when you call them out is, hey, you're an insane person, (laughs) right? Yeah. And as a normal human being, that is not easy to say to someone. Yeah. 
you're a liar and you're in, you're a little bit insane. So, uh, one night we were sitting here. I don't know why I was like, what am I doing? This is absolute bullshit. Why am I even, why am I wasting this much time? I was like, you have to, you have to come, you have to call this person out. You have to face the, I ghost, like I go away for a while. I just sort of go silent on telegram Mm -hmm. and I hear the message and it's like, Richard, I have good news for you. And I'm like, okay, well, what is it? Uh, I was like, I'm really busy right now. Uh-huh. I can't talk. And she's like, can I, can I call you? Uh, not right now. I'm busy. So I let it go another day. And then I just type, what is the good news? And she says, can I call you? <laughs> I say, all right, you can call me. That's when I laid the phone down. and Ready to record. Because you had some. Right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. That's That's the telegram ring. Hello. Hello. I'm just a fool for you. And we're going to get back to that phone call in about two minutes. But first, the most important part of this podcast, the Patreons that we have love us and take care of us in so many different ways. We thank you. And for those of you who do not go online and give us money every single month. <laughs> You're listening to this for free. Thank them. Find a Patreon of ours and give them a kiss. <laughs> That's what you should do. You should. You owe them something. <laughs> we, on the other hand, owe you nothing. <laughs> this is a very important month. This month, the Patreons not only paid all our bills, they got you out of a very tragic and important medical emergency. Lauren went to a specialist. Uh, I don't know how to say this in in Spanish, but that's the only language it's written in here. (laughs) You went to the Adotagrama para el plan de tratamiento de Lauren. And uh, you have some problems. And I'm going to tell everybody what the Patreons paid for as soon as we we list the new ones that came along for saving your life. Patreon heroes, go. Happy dog. Nestor and Angie. Jim Partners. Keegan and Bailey. Greg. Jufu Mao. Napo. Rhonda Licious. David, Mike, Joe, Eve, Ryan, I fell in the bushes. Ryan, I know, is actually a person who was in Antigua and did fall in the bushes. How I remembered it uh, saved his life. You did. Ali, Aaron, Chris, Brittany Cloud. That leads us to we want to fuck JR and K at Sensation. We want to fuck JR and K. K at Sensation, which is our event in November. And now that we set it on the air, we have to have sex with them. <laughs> That's a law. It's how it works. Yeah, so you, these wonderful Patreons, Lauren found out that she has cavities in tooth number 36, 26, 27, 37, 46, and 47. Good Lord have that's, mercy. That's disgusting. It's so much. I it's mean, like honestly, every tooth. Stop it. Unbelievable. Anyway, I found out my wife is is Mrs. Yuckmouth. Oh my God. Do you remember Mr. Y- Mr. Yuckmouth? I don't. You're so old. I am. I'm so young. That that bill came to ten thousand eight. Eight hundred dollars. I don't even know if we're going to make that in a year. <laughs> it's pesos. It? Uh, it's pesos. Yeah. Oh, that makes a big difference. <laughs> Thank you for getting Lauren's teeth filled. Hopefully someday you'll meet her and fill her. They will be in my mouth forever. You are correct. And I love that. Yay! If you want to become a Patreon, go over to patreon.com forward slash room 77 and give us something. We'll love you more for it. I'm just a fool for you. Hello. Hello? Ooh. Someone picked up. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Uh, I don't know if there's a delay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? But this doesn't go on for an hour, I promise. (laughs) I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how the hell did you think that that voice was a woman? (laughs) I don't want to comment on that right now. Just say that one more time. very apologetic. I said, I'm so Does sorry. Does not sound South at all. For you. I just, like, if you, I make you make up. No, 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 it's fine. It's, it's totally fine. So Yeah, uh, so what happened was so she asked what me, she was like, I need you about? to send me video of you fucking. And I'm like, honey, we need to send audition videos. So I said, I need to make a porn reel. And you looked at me and you went, are you out of your goddamn <laughs> mind? I was like, I think I am, but I, th- I really want this job. So uh, you're like, no, we're not sending any fuck videos to some fucking strange weirdo lady uh, in the for middle free. for free. What we did is we compiled all the video that we had that's already online and available. We put a giant watermark on it and we sent it to her. We were like, here's the video you can use mm-hmm. to go get me my $100,000. Mm-hmm. 
right? So we sent her that. Now I'm waiting to see uh, if I got the job. She's going to give me the news. Okay. Remember, I asked for $100,000. So um, I talked to uh, my bosses mm-hmm. and uh, uh, about the payment. So as I told you that uh, last time uh, when I discussed mm-hmm. with you, um, I told you that um, the are okay with like 50,000 more, but you said no, that you I want a hundred. Yeah. I st- actually started at 250. That's a true um, story. I own like 100,000. So actually a hundred thousand may be still not possible for them. Um, but uh, they are willing to pay you uh, 70,000 mm-hmm. uh, for the whole project. So 70,000. 70. Now I want to say that 70,000 part. What I want to say is, I know it's fake at this point. Everything about it is fake. I know uh, I'm being tricked. Obviously, I'm recording. It. Right, right, But right. even in that moment, I'm like, I'll do 70,000. <laughs> I was doing it too. 70,000 is okay. I'll deal with it. I mean, for two weeks For work. two weeks work, I'll this... do 70,000. Richard, what are you talking about? None of this is real. <laughs> what she doesn't know that we did, she had joined Patreon to mm-hmm. get in touch with us, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what happened was she had joined, I think, July 29th or something like that. Right. Now, the way Patreon work is fucked up. It sucks so bad for everybody because when you join on the latter part of the month, it will still charge you at the beginning of the next month. Keep saying they're going to change it, but it really sucks and there's there's no way around it. So if you are going to join, uh, still join us on Patreon. We really need it. But uh, maybe in the beginning of the month. (laughs) What happened was she got charged twice. And she sent a message that said, I want a refund because I got charged twice. Mm -hmm. Well, what I did is... But not to Telegram. She sent it to Patreon. She sent it to the Patreon email address, which actually comes to us. Now, we don't get any information with Patreon. We just get an email address that you put in and whatever name you decide to put in. So this just said Saza with her fake Hotmail address. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, it's going to be worth a shot. So I take a person, our super assistant, and I write up an email that says, listen, if you want a refund, I'm going to need your first and last name, the last four digits of the card, and the username that you signed up for. And I had her send it to Saza and say, hi, my name is such and such. I am in charge of the Patreon. I understand you want a refund. This is the information I'm going to need. Well, she fell for it. She fell for it. We got a name back, right? So this is the information information that I have uh, for now. your flight business class a uh, round trip for you know round trip um, so that's good coming, coming here to <laughs> don't have to be come stuck. back and then of course we're going to <laughs> so she said I don't have to be stuck hotel and uh, you know like um food and uh, you know um um, other like community. Now what I'm doing here is I'm you staying know, a, a um, bit quiet which is making her nervous uh-huh. right I'm not know, reacting yeah. right okay okay uh so that sounds great. Um, and when do they send a contract over? Right, because I want a contract. Yeah, That's what I want. So you know what I mean, just um, just um, they, show me the they money. Have to like make the contract. Um, you know, because uh, um, we will put like you, um, these things in the contract. Things. Because as you, I told you previously that we are um, our contract. The sign, uh, the money is not very big, so we want to put like uh-huh. all these things in the contract, uh-huh. and then hopefully we will we will be able to send you uh, in a week or two. Right, spoken like someone who okay. makes puts Sounds a lot of good. contracts together. Yes. What, is, what is what is your name again? Your, uh, my name Saza. is Saza. 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 That's your that's your full name, Saza. Saza, Saza Kim. Kim. Yeah. Saza a really Saza good Kim. Korean name. Mm. That's your full name. Yeah. Uh, so here yeah. I go. Here I go. I just want to know who uh, who the contract is coming from. Oh yeah. Um, I think with the contract, um, I will. Um, we will put like all the information. Um, about <laughs> the company. And Good. I can't That's, believe you then, fell for this. What is that? Co- what is that? Co- what is the company? What is the, com- what is the company? So this name? is about the third time of Aster. What is the name of the um, goddamn I company? I sent you the link. So we are gonna send the company is the same because the producers are the same from the same mm-hmm. website. Um, because that subduction company. Um, um, the one thing. Uh, do you have like any agent or any um like somebody your Legal. I'm with CAA. 
do you I'm with, I'm with CAA. Do you work as a freelancer? Uh, no, I'm just a, a freelancer. I just had a, a, a really, a really a quick freelance. question for you. In porn, anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is Haider? Saif? Now I ask, who is this person that asked for the refund on Patreon? So I say, who is this person? Oh, because this is uh, my boyfriend. And she uh, says, it's my boyfriend. Bank account number that I used for uh, to pay your Patreon. We sent for our reimbursement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's Who's your, the cat that's your boyfriend. Now? Yeah, yeah. Not gonna okay. wait for the contract. Two, three um, weeks. Now here it becomes a point of just being like, what do I say to not embarrass this person? And it's weird to be in this position with a catfish when you're like, I don't want to make this person well, feel awkward. What the fuck? It's I mean, a very a odd name, thing to do. Right? Yeah, it's it's, doing, it's a master manipulation is pleasure. what catfishing I mean, means. You're bending crazy. over backwards. No. But I say, no, no, eh, fuck that. Not. So I just and start yeah, asking like, some I'm direct also question. Going to get like, you know, my done my job and all that. And uh, <laughs> what is what is your job? What is your job though? So I am doing the casting. So I usually casting cast for So now she's companies. a casting director. That's my job. For the company. Yes, yes. And the company's name is what? It's Han Cinema, as I mentioned you. But that's the name of the web the website. We have the <laughs> channel. So very believable. Um, yes. Yeah. The, the production, the website, the website and, and the, the casting is all the same. Channel. Okay. But like um um well, in any case, if you have any problem or something, you can just text me or send me like a message okay. and um, I will try to help you and okay. I'll try to give you as much as information possible. But if it doesn't yeah, I'm telling work you, it's not you, working you for me. I just, I just told you. And I'm trying to tell you. you know, honest about it. Um, I don't have to. Here's the thing. Like, Here's the thing, something. Saza. I just want to say that. Um, in, in the most respectful way I can say it, I, I know that you said that that is your boyfriend, but your accent sounds very Middle Eastern. <laughs> um, listen to you, Mr. Uh, linguist. Uh, yeah. No, like, I don't know if it sounds like that, but. Um, well, it sounds, you sound like a Middle Eastern person speaking, not, not someone from Korea. So that, that confuses me as well. Yeah, and being I should have said, said that three uh, days ago. Haider is your boyfriend, and he's that's obviously a Muslim name. It sounds pretty Middle Eastern to me. So, can you explain that? Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. it's just the accent because I have like it's many rubbing friends it's rubbing off on me. Who are she from says. Middle East? So I have a lot of Middle Eastern friends. That, but yeah, mm-hmm. okay. If you think like if you think that I am not legitimate or something like that, then it's completely fine. I understand your concern. It's like hard to believe. I find it I hard understand. that somebody would go through this much trouble okay. to get pictures and photos of an actor that they found on on the internet. Like to no, me, no, I don't, that I seems deleted. great. Like who would do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, I deleted your. So I looked him up, right? And he he has wow. a profile online on LinkedIn, uh, it, Facebook. Yeah. So there's a there's that name pops up in in South Korea. Is is your boyfriend really a uh, engineer? Um, I don't know. What are you like? What, what does your boyfriend do for a living? Oh, he really does live in South. Korea. Yeah, there's there's a there's a person with that name in South Korea that is a professor at a university. Mm. So I say, what does your boyfriend do? Mm-hmm. Uh, he works here, but I don't want to like. I don't want to share. Mm-hmm about my personal thing because that's not going to be professional. It's not professional to share my personal stuff. There's a name exactly like that in Korea. Is that your boyfriend? Because I have a photo of him. No, no, not my boyfriend. No. No. So there's two Aider Saif in Seoul, South Korea? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, it's just a, it's just a common name there. <laughs> And there's only two. Yeah, there's, and she knew that. Yeah, there's a, there's two. All right. Well, I guess I will be awaiting the contracts or the the documents, and then we can take it from there, right? Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. 
Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, bye-bye. I'm done with you. And I hang up the, the telegram. And the next text that I get is, you made me very uncomfortable. Oh, asking shit. Asking me about my boyfriend, and I no longer want to go through with this deal. Oh. And I say, well, that's... She didn't have to talk to her bosses for that she one. She did not. She fired me. Oh, I mean, Richard. Yeah. She went from casting director to CEO. <laughs> I text back to her. That's okay, Saza. Uh, Here's the thing, though. Would you mind if I just use the recording that I made of us two on the phone on the podcast? (laughs) Because our listeners are going to fucking love it. (laughs) Needless to say, she freaked out. Now, I had a string of messages, voice messages that she had left that I, I guess she deleted because I didn't download them fast enough. But she was very upset that she was uncovered. That you would have the nerve to, yeah, well, to ask the, that many questions, yeah, I got, Richard. Yeah, I got very personal. But what I said to him or her, him, I guess him, what I said to him was, listen, I want to hear your side of the story. I want, this is what I want to know. Yeah. I want to know why you did that, right? And I want to interview you and I won't use your name and I won't use any of that embarrassing stuff that you said in the phone call. Just let us know. Just like, t- what? Let me talk to you and I'll explain to everybody. And you can say in your own words, what possessed you or people who catfish to do that? And he said, no, I, I will not do that. And I said, well, I'm going to use this recording, but if I'm not going to use this, that would be my deal is if you come on. Yeah, make a real interview. And I'll talk to you about it and we'll be civil about it and we'll talk about it. But he refused. He refused. And uh, so listen, thank you for the entertainment. That was fun. I got to be honest. We had a lot of laughs about it. <laughs> we were dying. We, we were laughing about it. I am going to miss that $70,000. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I am. I was really looking forward to like going scenes like a popping in like a K-pop music video yeah. or like, yeah. I just had some things I wanted to do down there. No doubt at all. I mean, listen, you were going to get some really tight pussies. Oh my God. Some small hands yeah. on your big cock. I was going to look really big. Gonna, yeah. I was going to tell my entire family I'm a Korean porn star. Hello. This was going to be great. And you were going to nail it. You like, you were going to bring such a good performance that I, you were gonna I don't 70 wanna, was just gonna be the intro I was gonna I saw myself at a Korean award what ceremony yeah I did like <laughs> I oh, just want to thank Saza. That's South Korean porn star Richard. Yeah, that was me. That was going to be me. And uh, no, none of it. None of it came mm. true. I don't want to say that I was already spending that <laughs> that seventy thousand because I wasn't. <laughs> I, wasn't <laughs> I wasn't spending it. But bye bye Fiji. <laughs> I did have a motorcycle picked out. Sorry, baby. I did have a sweet BMW (laughs) picked out. So listen, uh, Saza, thank you so much. Uh, We hope you're listening. If you are a catfish out there that is listening to this, don't do that to people. It's manipulative and it just sucks. You're you're preying off people's vulnerabilities, insecurities, and it's just mean. To those of uh, you who are out there and things like this happen online, it sounds cliche, but listen to your gut, right? (laughs) There is something inside of you that says... This isn't right. And it's a different feeling than someone lying to you. Like, I don't think that that part is true. or I don't think that that part is true. It's a different feeling. It's a feeling that you get that is instinctual. And if that is the case, ask specific questions and don't let them throw you off of that trail. That is it. This is how to be catfished and how to not get catfished. (laughs) And also how to become a South Korean porn star brought to you by... (laughs) Room 77. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, Lauren, not being a porn star is a lot less pressure on me right now. I've also not been going to the gym because of it, <laughs> but I'm still a little saddened, you know? I think that you would have had a bright future. I think so. Do you know I get up in the middle of the night and I go out to our little deck? I look off into the distance. To the yonder. Wondering, what if I was somewhere right now in tiny little tight Asians? (laughs) Oh, well, maybe next time. All right, we have to wrap this thing up. Before we go, we want to tell you about Bikini Addiction. Bikini Addiction is... It's my favorite bikini, let's be honest. It's not a question. It's a lot of people's favorite bikini. Yeah, it's no joke. We get a lot of pictures on a, in the Patreon Telegram group. I wonder why people do get addicted to this particular bikini. So I called up the owners of Bikini Addiction and I said, Hey, Brad, Jane, tell me what's going on here. Because I, I gotta be honest, I don't think you're that talented. <laughs> what are they seeing that I'm not 
seeing. Right. So he was like, I understand what you're saying, Richard. Let me show you some pictures. He said, what we do here is we are all about the confidence, right? Yeah. Especially in the booty. I said, well, how do you mean, Brad and or Jane, whoever's on the phone right now? <laughs> I don't really know. And he's not going to show you some pictures. Okay. So we shared screens. We're zooming. <laughs> so he says, well, what do you see here? I see. I said, Brad, this seems like a federal crime to me. Is that girl underage? <laughs> She says, no, no, no. That woman is 88 years old. Holy crap. Because she's wearing bikini tics. He said, now what do you see in this photo? I said, well, that is obviously trucker porn where men dress in bikinis. They go to truck stops and they have sex. It's a fetish. <laughs> and he said, no, that's a woman in another brand. Wow. That's how it looks. I said, wow, they should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> I get it now. I'm not kidding. It makes you look better when you're wearing a crystal thong or something scrunchy. It just makes your butt look better. You have to take the risk. Let your butt out. They know how to do it. Get one for free. Tell them how to do that, Lauren. If you want to book an adult vacation of five nights or more, we'll give you a free one. Or you can get 10% off with our promo code ROOM77 and head over to bikiniaddiction.com and punch that in at checkout. Bikini Addiction. It's all about that ass. You are still interested in going to Mexico at Sensation on November 9th. Make sure to go to our website, Room 77 Life, and look it up. And also Antigua in February. If you want to book for that, make sure to reach out and get your spot early. All right, Lauren, I got to go floss, <laughs> which I would advise you to do. <laughs> Stop it. That about does it for us. For more information, photos, or to contact us, go to room77podcast.com. Thanks for stopping by Room 77. We had a blast. Now get your clothes and get out. But you break my heart. Left me in.